It's Bill from HistoryHighlights.com with a little bonus for you here on this July the 19th. Library of Congress website had another great feature I could not resist because it ties into John Muir. On this date, July the 19th of 1869, John Muir, this famous naturalist, set pen to paper to capture his experience of awakening in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Published in 1911, My First Summer in the Sierra is based on Muir's original journals and sketches of his 1869 stay in the vicinity of the Yosemite Valley. His journal tracks his three-and-a-half-month visit to the Yosemite region and his ascent of Mount Hoffman and other Sierra peaks. Along the way, he describes the flora and fauna as well as the geography and geology of the area. In his July 19 entry, he wrote, Watching the daybreak and sunrise, the pale rose and purple sky changing softly to daffodil yellow and white sunbeams pouring through the passes between the peaks and over the Yosemite domes, making their edges burn, the silver firs in the middle ground catching the glow on their spiry tops, and our camp grove fills and thrills with the glorious light, everything awakening alert and joyful. John Muir emigrated from Scotland to Wisconsin as a child. He attended the University of Washington and began working as a mechanical inventor. But after an 1867 industrial accident nearly blinded him, he abandoned his career as an inventor and took to work as a naturalist. An early defender of the environment, Muir in 1876 advocated adoption of a federal forest conservation program. His popular articles and books describing Yosemite's natural wonders inspired public support for the establishment of Yosemite National Park in 1890 and expansion of the park in 1906. At the same time, Muir continued to work and write as a serious scientist whose fieldwork in botany and geology enabled him to make lasting contributions. In 1892, Muir co-founded the Sierra Club as an association explicitly dedicated to wilderness preservation and served until 1914 as its first president, shaping it into an organization whose leadership and political advocacy for protection of the natural world continues to this day. The popularity of President Theodore Roosevelt's groundbreaking conservation program owed much to John Muir's writings. In 1903, Roosevelt and Muir visited the Yosemite region together. In 1908, Roosevelt issued a presidential proclamation establishing the Muir Woods National Monument in Marin County, California, in Muir's honor. Muir died six years later, although sorrow and disappointment at his failure to save Hetch Hetchy Valley from becoming a reservoir for San Francisco may well have contributed to his death. Muir had succeeded more than any other single individual in establishing the preservation of wild nature as a major American cultural and political value. The clarity of his vision, the eloquence of his writing, continue to inspire environmentalists throughout the world. Matter of fact, when California, as you can tell, chose their souvenir coin, they put uh, John Muir there on the coin. John Muir also loved Alaska. He visited Alaska seven times in the last 20 years of the 1800s. He explored Glacier Bay and all through the coastline. As a matter of fact, Alaska's, Alaska's Muir Glacier is named for him. Uh, he wrote a book called Travels in Alaska, and in that, here's a little sample of his beautiful writing. To the lover of pure wildness, Alaska is one of the most wonderful countries in the world. Wherever you chance to be always seems at the moment of all places the best, and you feel that there can be no happiness in this world or in any other for those who may not be happy here. I read and study a lot about John Muir. I work usually each year up in Alaska for part of the summer. I've got one of my uh, audiobook, ebook presentations on John Muir's time in Alaska, sharing his adventures and some of his beautiful writings. I think you might enjoy that and all of our ebooks, paperback books, audiobooks, and video presentations that you can prowl through over at historyhighlights.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great day. Bye bye.